Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review, and um, this is kind of interesting because these uh, were not, these weren't anything I was intending to review. However, I've been doing a lot of marker illustration lately and sharing my work on Instagram in this company, Mozart Supplies, or Mozart Supplies, like Mozart the uh, musician. Uh, I think that's what, what the inspiration was, but the, the name of the company is Mozart Supplies. And uh, they had seen my work and asked if I would like to try out their pens and um, no strings attached. And I figured, oh, what the heck, I'd give them a whirl. So they sent me a set of 20 brush pens, kind of like the Zig Real Brush pens. They remind me the most of. And they sent me a set of um, 12 of the dual tip pens, which are very similar to like the Stampin' Up! or the Tombow pens. Um, so these I went to use first, and I really like them. They come in this nice tray, so you can have them all organized on your table while you're using them. And I also like that this little wallet they come in, I can throw a water brush in, I could throw in uh, like a small sketchbook or, and keep it all together, like if I wanted to craft on the go. I typically don't craft on the go with markers unless I'm going to a crop or something, but uh, it's kind of nice to have that... Um, that versatility. In fact, I took it to the living room and watched TV and did these little sketches I'm going to show you here. Um, and we're going to compare these with these Zig Real Brush pens. And then uh, they also sent these, which are their dual brush pens, which you can see just by the looking at the pens, they look an awful lot like, you know, your Tombows or your whisper, Whispers or your Mementos um, or your Stampin' Up, you know, very, very similar um, type of marker. And so I've been playing with both of them. So these sketches here were done with the brush ones, the the uh, the Mozart brush. I don't know if they want one that said Ma Mozart, Mozart, Mozart supplies is the whole thing. Oh, we'll get it. We'll get it eventually. Um, so I did these sketches with that, and I was really having a good time with it. I was really impressed with how they worked. Um, impressed with how they blended out. This is a little color swatch I did of the brush pens and this, I did this little illustration with them. Blended out really good with a wet brush and what I did here was I, uh, I swatched, put a little ink and then I dragged it down with a brush and then I did all of these little swatches um, and let them sit for a couple days and then I actually blended out those two a few minutes ago. I was actually recording this but then my daughter called and she had to come home sick from school so um, so I had to stop and go go get her and I figured I'm just gonna start this all over again. Um, and then I you know just kind of did a little spectrum rainbow thing here to see how they blended which was very nice. Um, so this is what these are the 20 colors and 20 color set. Um, the thing I wanted to mention about these is that they are planning on selling a refill kit. If you're on their website they say there'll be a refill kit coming soon so you can buy these pens once and just refill them and that's I think really smart because with these brush tips they're like a brush they're not going to wear down like a felt tip pen will or even one of the kind of fibery um like uh brush pens like uh like you know um Tombos or Copics you know they have that more fibery pen these are not going to wear down because they're actual bristles so I think it's smart to have refills for them so they are going to be offering refills which really impressed me and put them a push them a little higher in my opinion than the Zigs of course they don't have as many color selection as the Zigs which is probably why they can offer a refill kit affordably. Um, but you know, you, they'll work great together too, which is something to consider. Um, and then I swatched out the felt ones when I first got them, the regular brush pens that are like this. You get a brush on this end, like that, and then you get a fine tip on that end. So it's not like the, it's a finer tip than the, um, then the Tombow. It's more like a Stampin' Up, but it's not that hard plastic nib. It's definitely like a, a felt nib. Um, it's definitely like a felt nib pen. It reminds me a lot of the Whisper, the the, the Whispers markers, if you ever had those. Um, but all of these fine nibs were really juicy, and I did not find that to be the case with the Whispers. But I did just get them, so um, just like any markers that are double-ended, you want to store them horizontally for the best results. But again, I had fun playing with them, and then I did do some highlighting with some other uh, pens that I had. But um, it seems to me that the ink in the 12 set, the colors and the ease of use and how they blend out and everything, they seem to be, the ink seems to be identical in both kits. So I think it just boils down to, if you do want to try these markers, um, what kind of tip you like better. Because I don't even think the prices are that different between the dual tip and the brush tip pen. I think it just depends on what you're going to find useful. For instance, if you are um, someone who likes to go scrapbook and rubber stamp at crops, you're probably going to find the um, the dual tip markers here are more useful because you're going to have the um, you're going to have a medium that you can color something with, and then you're going to have the the end you can write with, and then you can also ink up a stamp with the brush end, and that's what I did with these two. I did this one with this with this type of pen, and I did this one with a brush pen, and I did feel like the ink coming off, and probably because it's like a felty nib, 
the ink coming off of this onto the stamp, it seemed to the stamp seemed to hold a lot more of this ink than it did the real brush ink, and I just think it's because that the the tip um, acts like a stamp pad kind of when you're when you're coloring on the stamp and stamping it. And I'll show you how to do that in case you've never done that before. Um, you probably have if you've been to my channel before, but uh, let's try it on this crab. So what I like to do, um, and I'm just going to do it with the felt tip ones because they do work. They they both work, but this the felt ones work a little bit better. What you want to do is color it with uh, your lightest color that you want to use first. I'm going to use this um, this orange, and I actually try to get the entire thing with that lighter color so I don't go with anything uninked. And these stamps are by ArtNeco.com, by the way. If you are, uh, I'll put a link in the video description in case you like these. I will be using these on a tutorial coming right up. And that's why they're on my desk. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know where that's from. And I'm going to give it a little bit of red here and there. And then I think I'll give it a little black. Just kind of random taps of black. Okay, then what you do is you breathe on it. And then you stamp it down. Hopefully the stamp's pretty good because it's my art journal, which is kind of lumpy and bumpy from different things I have in here. Okay, so there we have a nice image. But then to um, enhance it a bit, I like to take a wet brush, like a water brush. And I'll just kind of like drag some of the color around, kind of release the ink. I also like to do this with watercolor crayons because it, because uh, you'll get a lot more uh, pigment down with a watercolor crayon, and it gives you a cool look. But you can see, it uh, works really well. And up there, I had done the orange part with the uh, brush marker and the red part with the felt marker. And, um, and they both worked. I just find that the, I think the felt markers work a teeny bit better than this, better for this just because it, it grabs the ink a little bit better. Like I use the felt here and the, uh, the brush one there. So, um, the other thing I just want to show you, if you're trying to decide between the two, um, if you're going to color like in a large area, you can go a lot faster with the felt tip brush end. See how quickly I'm able to get a solid non-streaky area of color. If I do that with the brush, if I go that fast with the red pen, for instance, and we can check, see how close they are to for color. If I go that fast with the red pen, I'm going to get it very streaky. So if I'm going to do the red pen, I, the brush pen, I have to go much slower and give time for that ink to go down the bristles. Okay, so that's something else. However, if you like to do brush lettering, I think the flexible nib here is going to be um, a lot more forgiving and a lot easier to work with than trying to use the felt tip, which is a little stiffer. But I don't know, I don't do brush lettering, so I can make some swirls. But I don't, I don't do brush lettering, so I really can't, can't uh, comment too much. Like if I'm doing my, I don't feel like it's easy as easy to get like a grade, you know, thick and thin lines with this. I feel like it's a little bit more, um, like it's it's a little more uniform. So, and I'm sure somebody that does brush lettering can uh, can give you better advice. Uh, as far as you know, reconstituting this ink and making it watercolor, reds are very staining colors, and I'm still able to drag this color out and turn it into watercolor. It comes it, it comes up pretty well without staining, which is really nice. Um, so I think it's the same ink in both pens. I think it just depends on what you like for a tip. Now I want to compare these to the real brush pens. So I think I'll just grab a red one. I have this set of 24 real brush pens, which quite frankly, I feel like is all I need. I don't feel like I need all 60 colors um, because they blend and mix so well, um, as do these here that I have. I don't know if I have a really bright true red here. So this is kind of nice because I think it'll go, I think it'll make this set a little more useful to have these other colors I can use with it. Um, but let me just color, it's the same thing, if I go really fast with that, it's going to skip just like that, so I have to go kind of slow. And I do want to um, preface that my Zig pens are like over a year old and my kids use them and they have been used a lot, so these aren't going to be as juicy as those brand new ones, because that, that wouldn't be a very fair comparison. But yeah, these you know, go out to watercolor really well. Um, I think you just kind of want to look at the swatches and see if, if you do have the zig pens, if those would give you any new colors, because quite frankly, I think they're very similar. If I look like apples to apples and I compare the tips on these, the, um, the tips are a smidgen bigger. I'm going to zoom in because you can't really see that very well. Let me just get that in front of some white paper so you can see. 
So I think like the tips, this is the, uh, this is the uh, Mozart and these are the zigs. The zigs have this, this tip there. Um, now this could just be because this is newer, you know, this is a super sharp point. Um, the tips are a little bit bigger. So if I was going to, let's see, if I was going to do a thin line, I could do a thin line, but then I can get a nice thick line like that. And let's just see with the zigs. I mean, it's pretty close. So I think it just depends on, um, you know, if you look online, what the better deal is. Um, these are generally going to be a lot cheaper. I think it's $26 for the set of 20 of these and you can get refills. They're going to be offering refills on their website, which I was really impressed with. And there are no refills for the zigs. And that could just be because there's like, I don't know, 60 or maybe even a hundred. I don't know how many, there's over 60 colors of the real brush pens, maybe twice that much. I'm not sure. And there's only 20 of these. So I think it's probably a little bit just more doable for them to offer refills when you don't have as many pens. But, um, I like the idea of buying something once and refilling it. So, um, so for me, in my opinion, that makes these a little bit more useful however if you want that versatility of color if you want that huge range of color I should say then you're probably gonna be more drawn towards zigs um, but there'd be nothing wrong because they all work together like I'll show you I'll, work, I'll use these together let me go let me start off with this bright red here I want to do it where you can see I'm gonna do it I'm gonna make a heart okay so I've used that bright red and this is the Mozart bright red and I'm just going to go ahead and grab a pink from this from the uh, from the zig and I can go in here and I can lift up the color from the uh, Mozart brushes and drag it inward and blend it just like if, it, if that was a zig pen so you can totally use them together you don't have to be like you know, if you started with one set or the other, it's not like you couldn't add on, but you don't want to buy duplicate colors. So I would just make sure that you're not just buying the same thing over and over again. Cause I think that happens quite a bit with craft supplies. We buy so many things that are so close to each other. I think I'm going to go with a, uh, I'm going to go with a pink from the brush pen set because that was a little bit lighter. I am like, I honestly have stuff stacked like a Jenga pile in this, <laughs> in this room here today. So I could pick up with this lighter pink and drag that zig color in more. You know, look at that. So, you know, and, and I can even go with those other pens and, you know, do the same thing. If you do go into darker ink, you just might want to scribble it off a little bit to get the excess paint off. But I think they're fantastic. I'll put a link to the Mozart, Supply, Mozart Supplies website in the video description so you can check it out if you want to. Um, of course, if you already have water-based markers you're happy with, then then you don't need these. This is an option if you've been looking for an inexpensive set of water-based markers that um, you can do the same effects that people are doing with Tombos um, and, and uh, Mementos and Zig Clean brush pens and whatnot. So just kind of, um, you know, look at your budget, look at what your needs are. And um, if you could use some brush pens, I think they're an excellent choice. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and share this with your crafty friends if you think they might find it useful. And until next time, happy crafting!